camera's crispy. Thank you. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. It makes filming so much more fun. That was my accident. <laughs> Yo, this is this is a lot faster than it was before. I'm giving it this thing water. feel I know. I'm this like thing. 30% more. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Road gets shitty. <laughs> Dude, I built this car to drive it's it though. Better. This is yeah, exactly look at what it. this thing is meant for. It's fucking ripping. See, I think it's making more torque. I think oh, that yeah, could yeah. be the response or the reason why it feels so good. Oh, that's what that was. He said there was a huge clump in my exhaust. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the clump you were talking about? Yeah. That's funny because that's a huge yeah, clump. Also <laughs> a little bit of oil. A lot of it. The turbo drain. I have a new one coming. New fitting coming from Australia. Not too bad. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Joel. In this video, the main thing I'm focused on is I want to go 100% throttle in my E30. As of right now, it has right around 470 miles on it, and it's been leaking a lot of oil still. So we're gonna change out the oil drain into hopefully something that's more permanent and not leaking at all and like the perfect solution for me because there's no reason that it should still be leaking. And I just, we need to get into this and get this figured out. There's some people that say that they don't like going full throttle on their freshly rebuilt engines until you get a thousand miles on it, but after doing that 470 miles, I'm like, I've been driving it for a pretty good amount of time through very different loads, and it's been fine. So <laughs> I'm just gonna start ripping on it before it gets too cold out. Because there's also some people that just rip it right out of the box. So I'll do the happy medium between the two. The only thing I didn't wanna do is I didn't wanna rip on it too hard when it was pissing oil still, because I cleaned everything. Some of you guys are saying that maybe the clicking noise that the car was making was the E-fan hitting. And I don't think it was because under hard braking, I started to hear the fan touch the water pump and it sounded like a very distinct like it was, I noticed that the engine was moving forward. So I do want to get stiffer engine mounts and trans mounts. Right now they're polyurethane ADA. So like the softest polyurethane that you can get. I want to get stiffer ones, but I don't know how stiff I want to go. I guess the one right before aluminum because <laughs> I need it to be pretty stiff. And also the chassis mount shifter would love stiffer engine and trans mounts because that thing is solid mounted to the chassis. My flexible turbo drain finally came in from Australia. It was actually really quick. One week is all it took to come all the way from Australia, which is crazy. Here it is. One week is a lot better than I thought. I thought it was gonna be like three to four weeks, but I think this is gonna do the trick. It's stainless steel, one and a half inches from bolt hole to bolt hole. That's very important because all of the drains that were custom were always for the two inch model, but this is exactly what I need. A 10 a.m. on the bottom, and I also bought some stainless braided line off of Amazon with a straight fitting that's gonna go straight into here and then a 90 into the oil pan. And hopefully this fixes my oil leak issue. I got it on eBay from Pack Performance. Shout out to them for getting me it so quick. I really like the size of this drain. There's no kind of restrictions in there. And I think it's bigger than the 10 AN line. So this isn't gonna be a restriction. But yeah, I, I can't wait to put this in. This is gonna fit so much better. Now before anything, I need to mark this down pipe so that I can give it a small dent right where this valve cover meets the down pipe because it's currently touching and I wanna wrap it in that heat wrap again, but I don't want it touching so that the heat wrap doesn't start fraying off and making a huge mess like it was making before. This is temporary because I do wanna make a new down pipe, but that's gonna have to happen when I get a new turbo because eventually I do wanna get a new turbo. Upgrade to something a little bit nicer. Hopefully the downpipe already has like a little mark on it. Damn it, the O2 sensors. I didn't even need to mark it because there's already a mark there from where it was hitting. And I'm assuming because this was touching, it was heat transferring a lot easier and it was making the cover very, very hot. So this is definitely necessary if I wanna use this down pipe again. 
The clip started recording and then five seconds in, it didn't catch anything that I just did. But I, I heated it up red hot and it was actually pretty easy to do. I just held this on there and very lightly started tapping it because you can definitely be too hard on it. I'm gonna go put it in and see if that's enough. It doesn't really look like much from this angle. I put it in and it's still hitting a lot above right around here. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. It was still hitting a lot, so I made sure to go kind of hard on it because that's the only way this is gonna fit. <laughs> this has to get dented a pretty good amount. I wanna remake this downpipe for sure. I just checked again and right here it's hitting. So do the same thing. That's where I'm gonna leave it. I don't wanna dent it anymore because it's already kind of a lot. <laughs> I'm just gonna remake it when I do get that new turbo. I'm gonna cut this jug up so that I can put this heat wrap inside of here full of water and let it soak up. There we go. <laughs> I can drop that in there and fill that up with water. I'm gonna let that soak 10 minutes. You can see it bubbling, so I, I really do need to let it soak for a while. I'm just letting it drain out for the most part. I wanna get it wet so that I can get it extremely tight. I'm gonna take the pieces of tape off, I can fully assemble it. I just had those on so that it doesn't fray off. So now I don't want this metal tie to be up here. So I gotta start the wrap up here so that this clamp is down here. I'm just gonna fold it over amongst itself. Just like that. within itself like that. Go ahead and get this clamp on. I can come in with this tool to tighten it up. I don't remember how it is that I did this. I think that that is all set. I kind of tucked it in itself so that this corner doesn't get caught up in anything. My extra oil for my oil change has arrived, so I can now start making the oil drain line. I really hope that this works. I have high hopes. I think this is the ultimate setup for my car right now. First things first, I gotta take the oil lines off and then take the turbo out so I can get that new drain fitting on the turbo outside of the car. You know, like this constant. I mean, kinda. Fuck the wastegate line too. I thought this was gonna be a real quick pop it off, but. <laughs> Here we go. He went and he was like, this shit was loose. No way, is that what out? Is that it's why it's been leaking? leaking? It's definitely why it was no leaking. No way. For sure. This one was like super fucking loose. And I see some drops on the outside of here, whatever. At least I know the answer. I don't know. I got the drain here. I'm gonna just put the gasket on and bolt it on down. I'm gonna mix match the bolts. Hopefully this has enough threads once it compresses the lock washer because it wouldn't fit past this right here. Plug. They did send it with these hex nuts, but I don't see myself fitting a socket in there. So I'm not even gonna deal with this and try and finagle it. I'm gonna just use that old, little bit shorter Allen head bolts. I really hope that this drain just fits and is comfortable. Holy moly, that thing flexes a lot and it's good. So the reason why I can't get this turbo clocked up more is because the moment I turn it more vertical, 
I can't get that nut on to the stud right there. So I'm not able to tighten the turbo to the manifold. So that's as good as it's gonna get. The flexible drain though, this thing looks so good. It's coming down and then there it is. It's gonna dump it down right there and I could just remake the line from there to the oil pan and I'll be able to tighten it all nice and comfortably. I got one bolt on that turbo tight. Now I'm gonna lift the car up and get the drain made from there to the oil pan. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil now since the oil level is sitting above this oil drain, so definitely gotta get this done. And I've driven about 475 miles, so it's about time for the first oil change. Look at all that oil. Shit, how am I gonna get this out without making an absolute mess? Like that, like that. Ugh, there we go. <laughs> that worked. So after the 470 miles, that is what my magnetic drain plug looks like. I'm pretty sure that's normal sludge that comes out of an engine. Brand new filter going on in. Now that the oil is drained, I can loosen this and comfortably take this drain out. Oh, shit. I got the new stainless steel braided line. This is all 10 AN stuff. I'm gonna put this straight fitting on first so that I can screw it into the drain and then right away from the bottom, I'll be able to line this up with a whole lot of room. If I put this fitting on first, I'll have no room to measure this out. So I think this is the correct order. When you cut this braided line, you always gotta put tape over it. That's why there's these two tapes right there. Yes, that was perfect. Now I'm just gonna slip this on over and hope for the best. Please don't fray up. Hey, that actually worked pretty nice. That rubber is all the way seated around there, so I'm gonna put some oil on this right here so that it just slips on in. Oh, shit. Put kind of a lot on there, whatever. This is so ratchet, but it works. Damn, all this resistance. Oh, cause that nub goes in and it expands the hose into the fitting. Good thing I mounted this in the vise cause this is actually super hard to turn now. There we go. That looks good. Can I, I'm gonna see if I can give a good tug on it. Uh, yeah, I'm tugging on it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Damn it, y'all. I think it would have been better. Yeah, it definitely would have been better if this was a 45. So yeah, it looks like it would be best if I used the 45 off of that flexible drain to go on the left side of this radiator. I went out to a speed shop and got this 10 AN 45 and it fits way better than that straight. Now that hose is gonna be dropping straight behind this radiator hose and just straight down into the oil pan fitting right there. I definitely should have tested the fitting before putting the <laughs> fitting onto the hose, but whatever. Yeah, this is so much better. I'm so happy I got this flexible drain because this is perfectly gonna be able to dump the line down. I'm gonna leave this straight fitting on the other end just in case if I ever need it, it's already on there and I don't gotta take it off and ruin the hose. So I'm just gonna put the 45 on here and then I'm gonna cut the other end and put this 90 there and it'll be around there. And I'll just keep that for later. There we go, it's on there. I can get this little bit of cutting oil on there. I'm gonna put some oil on the threads too. I didn't do that before and it was very hard to get it on, so. Hopefully this helps a little bit. There we go. That fitting looks good though. Let's see how that fits. I'm gonna go ahead and put this 90 degree onto the oil pan. The 45 is on up there. And now I get to decide how short do I wanna cut it. So I need this hose to give it a little bit of structural rigidity. If I make it too short, it's gonna pull the flexible fitting into the exhaust manifold. So I definitely want to make sure to give it a little bit of room, but I don't want it to be too, too much, you know? I'm gonna put the electrical tape right dead center of where my mark is, wrap it around nice and tightly a few times so that when I cut it, it doesn't fray up. 
do one more just in case. All right, now with the cutoff wheel, I can cut right through the middle. It didn't cut through the last fiber when it fell. <laughs> I should have been grabbing the loose end. Whatever. I'm gonna use some compressed air and get all that debris out of there. Oh, it actually doesn't look too, too bad. I'm gonna see if I can trim that down. Yeah, I need... that's a little bit better. I'll run water through it after, but I'm gonna get this fitting on it first. There we go, it's fully seated. Use a little bit of oil again, because it worked really well last time. There it is, all set. Let's go see how it fits. That looks a hundred times better than my old drain. <laughs> I love this. Damn, it's a little bit too long, which sucks. I aired a little too much on the side of caution. With this fitting on there, it makes it so it's very bubbly, which I would rather it be more straight up and down, but yeah, I don't know. Now that everything is tight, it's not too, too bad. I made sure that this one is more vertical, and then this bend out here is pushing the flexible line basically away from the manifold, which is pretty good. So I am not gonna trim it down. I think it's gonna be fine exactly how it is. Now I need to take it off and run water through it since it's confirmed good. Just run me a little bit of water through here. That should be good. There's no kind of rubber in there, I don't think, now. I have these Earl's Conical Seals that a lot of people have good reviews of these things and they stop leaks on bad fittings and bad bungs. I'm gonna put them on both of mine just because I have them and hopefully it doesn't bite me in the ass. I really hope that this is gonna stop all kinds of leaks on this car. There we go, it's fully installed and I better not have a leak here. It looks really good. I'm sure you guys are tired of seeing this, but this means a lot to me because this thing was leaking like crazy, so I can add some oil now. Now that the turbo drain line is made, I'm gonna take the cover off of the valve cover and I'm gonna take all the spark plugs out. I'm gonna do a compression test first and then I'm gonna do a leak down test after because I wanna have a before number just in case if any issues arise, I could have something to base off of. I'm gonna be filling it up with some more of this braking oil that I was using. Hopefully there's no more oil leaks. Hopefully that drain was enough. M50s take six quarts, so that's what I'm putting in it. I always used to put seven in it, because M52s take seven, but M50 oil pan for E30s means that the 24 valve needs six quarts. I'm almost positive. That's what spark plug number one looks like. I'm gonna go one by one doing the compression test and I'll give you guys the results very soon. I'm gonna go ahead and take the fuel pump fuse out, fuse number 11, so that there's no fuel in the cylinders and then I'm gonna hold the throttle at 100% throttle while I do this compression test. All right, here we go. Compression test results are in, and they're looking very good. It's between 170 and 165 on all cylinders, which is great to see. The compression test just tells you the total amount of compression that is built up inside of the cylinder, but it doesn't tell you if any of it is leaking out. I wanna see if it's leaking out through the valves, rings, or any of the other stuff like that. So let's see how much percent it's leaking. Here is the leak down tester. I'm gonna be adding air from my air compressor right here. It's gonna be giving out a certain amount of PSI into the cylinder and then it's gonna read on this gauge how much pressure is actually coming back. You can see the health of this motor. I forgot that when you do the leak down test, you need to make sure that you bring this piston all the way up to top dead center for each cylinder that you do the leak down test on. And it has to be on the compression stroke because if not, then all the valves are gonna be open and obviously it's gonna be leaking 100%. It's kind of tedious, but I'm gonna just get it over with. I stuck a really long quarter inch extension into the sixth cylinder, 
And whenever that gets to the top is where top that center is. And then I gotta just hope that that's the compression stroke. If not, I gotta go back. So right, right about there, I think is top dead center. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the air compressor to this now. So I'm gonna just go ahead and plug this into the cylinder and start feeding in air pressure until we get to 100 PSI and then we're gonna see the amount of air that leaks out. There we go, that's connected. What is going on? <laughs> Why is this going so crazy? Huh? When I start adding more pressure, I gotta get to 100, but it's just circling over. Or do I need to apply 100 PSI first and then... What? Let me, see. Let me go read up. On this gauge, I actually gotta disconnect it and then feed this air until the right gauge reads zero. And they said it could be up like 20, 25 PSI. Twenty nine PSI and it's at zero. Licking so much. I changed my mind. I'm not doing that leak down test anymore. That gauge is kind of confusing and it's so time consuming, so I'm not doing it. There we go. The cover is on. Everything is on. The coil packs are good. I don't know where my other turbo manifold studs went and because of that I was using just a normal bolt on that bottom left one. The bolt ended up cross threading the threads and I had to re-tap it again so that left one in my manifold is a lot weaker. So I got some stainless steel hardware on Amazon. Hopefully now I can have all matching hardware and I don't mess any more threads up on the exhaust manifold. Is this not the thread pitch? Fuck! <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot, let me show you guys. <laughs> the reason why I'm taking this off is because the wheel bearing has gotta be shot. There's so much play up and down. Oh yeah, I could see it very clearly. Side to side, there's not really any play, but up and down, there's a pretty good amount. So I'm gonna change this wheel bearing out I got two new wheel bearings. I'm gonna switch one out, see how easy it goes, and then most likely do the other one at the same time, but I just wanna see how it goes. There we go. Damn, it's the whole thing. What? <laughs> <laughs> like goofy as fuck. <laughs> Cartoon ass hammer. That's a rinky dinky hammer right here. <laughs> Shit worked though. It worked though. <laughs> This is pretty sus. I can't get this socket on anymore, so I'm gonna try <laughs> with it half on. It's kinda dumb, but. Oh, it went on. Whoo! My ears, brother. Holy fuck, <laughs> my ears. I was just trying to. I you were next to it though. Oh, that was so loud. I forgot to take the set screw out. Please don't strip. Yes. Yeah, so I guess you can say these needed to be changed. I have never changed the front hubs in the five years that I've owned the E30s. <laughs> it's a good thing that I'm doing this. I went out and got this puller set so that I'm never without the tool. Just because I had the really big one before and I stripped it, but now I got all of them. Let's go see if this works. There we go. I'm gonna put some oil on here to hopefully help the threads not be so tight. I'm just using this cutting oil just because I've had good success with this thing. Whenever I put that oil anywhere, I always notice a very big difference. Bro, look at this. This is oh, definitely okay. gonna work. Like 
It's definitely gonna work. OBGYN and Joel. It's spread the pussy. Oh my god. <laughs> The oil on the threads is so good. Look at how smooth it's going. What the hell? <laughs> oh shit, that scared me. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> that was so easy. The race is still in there, so I gotta pop that race off now. This thing is so fried. I'm gonna take the dust shield off to get some more room. I've never been back here. It's crazy. These are from my first convertibles. These are all welded as a whole assembly. This strut and this whole hub. I could take this off. Damn! I have never had this good of a view at everything. So on E30s, the front strut coilovers have to get welded to the hubs. And that's what this is. This is from my first ever convertible. So this really badly needed to be done. Now I just need to pop this race off. I'm gonna try and grab it with some channel locks. Let's see what happens. Oh, yo, that actually worked. I put the channel locks right here, wedged itself along this stud, and I'm pulling on the back of the race over here, pulling this way. So I'm closing this right here on the stud, using it like a leverage point, and then I'm using that to pull the race back this way. Oh my god, look at that! <laughs> I got this all cleaned up now. I'm gonna put a little light coat of grease right here so I can slide the hub back on. I'm gonna just lube it up a little bit, not too, too much. Ow, <laughs> it went on by hand, what the hell? I was really not expecting that. So does that mean it will come off? It will come off, what? <laughs> I didn't get a new nut, which I should've, but I, I didn't know. I'm about to just let this shit sing for a little bit, honestly. I don't have a torque wrench that could go to the 210 foot-pounds that it needs, so this is what it's gonna get. That wheel bearing is very good now. Yeah, that's how it should be. Damn, this car's gonna ride so good now. <laughs> Let's go. I actually really do need a new nut. That thing isn't holding on at all. I wiped the rotor down with some brake clean just to get it all clean since I was working. There we go. It's all set now. I'm gonna leave this dust shield off until I get a new nut and then I'm gonna replace that just so I can have a secured way to lock it in. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other side. Do a quick montage of that. I definitely need to get a new nut because this whole notch that goes into the stud is missing on the other side. Oh my god! I was trying to do the same technique as the other side with the prying, but it was not working, so eventually I just grabbed onto it as hard as I possibly could and wiggled it back and forth. And now it's actually moving around, so hopefully it pops off now. The race is being very hard with me. And now, is he gonna go? Yes! Let's fucking go, bro! Finally!
there we go. Both wheel bearings are finally done. Now I gotta put the turbo assembly back on and I went to Advanced Auto, shout out to you Ray. And it's another stud kit for my turbo. The one that I ordered was the wrong thread pitch. Hopefully this one works. It's a little long, so I might have to cut them down, but we'll see. I was trying to get my exhaust on off camera, but it was not working. It does not like fitting now with like this cover there and just how I made the downpipe wasn't really accounting for it. And everything already was pretty close beforehand. And the more time I waste trying to get this exhaust to fit, the more I just want to change it to a V-band and remake the whole downpipe because it's already scraping so bad on that flex pipe. All that needs to be redone anyways. I hate working on something when I know that it's temporary. That's why I took so much time building this whole car on the version 2.0, but this one version 1.0 exhaust, it's it's looking slow, I really wanna redo it. I was always using three different types of hardware for this turbo and it was just two bolts and two studs and it was horrible. <laughs> so I'm gonna change them all back to studs now. I had to take the turbo off again because what ended up happening was because I was using the bolts for the turbo manifold, I ended up cross threading <laughs> the bottom left of the exhaust manifold. So those threads are very weak. I ran a tap through it with it as straight as possible and it's just on life support. Those threads are very weak now. So I'm gonna fix them. Two years ago when I was building my old engine in this, I stripped the threads in my block where the head studs bolt into. I ended up having to fix that and luckily I still have the same kit that I used to fix those threads and my head gasket never had any issues. It held 85 foot pounds from the stud with this kit. It's a time cert kit, it's pretty expensive. I think it was like $100 for this kit but it comes with a drill bit, counter bore, tap and then the driving tool. This kit is what M54 guys use when they want to turbo it because since they have an aluminum block the threads are very weak so this replaces those aluminum threads and makes them a lot stronger. Those of you that are wondering, I would not turbo an M54 aluminum block unless if I did this because it's very known that the studs just pull the threads out of the block and you just blow a head gasket so that's my opinion on that. These are the instructions right here. When I did it on the block it was very nerve wracking but there's only one way to get it done, just starting. Of course, the one that stripped out was the one that was closest to the shock tower because that was the one that was, I don't even know, it was, it's not even that hard to get it on. I don't know why it stripped out, but it's just me being stupid, yo. Now this drill like barely fits. I need to make sure that when I'm drilling this in, it needs to be perfectly square to the flange. I have all these other studs installed so that I can hopefully use those as a reference. And this one is the left. Wait, what? Okay, well apparently these studs are just too long. I can't get this nut on on the top right. And this one on the left is hitting on that little flange right there. I'm just measuring out where I want to cut the studs right now because they are way too long. Better long than short. Right, Ryan? Hey. <laughs> For everyone that says that the center of the turbo needs to be vertical, I know that. But this is, it does not allow it to go anymore because even right there I can't get the socket. This is a 15 mil and the 15 mil can't get past the drain flange right there just because the back housing is so small and everything is sitting so close to each other. I really don't want to do this, but to make power, I have to. Oh, this is so difficult to get myself to drill into this, but <laughs> I really don't want to mess this up. The angle that it looks like it wants to be at is just the drill sitting on the shock tower. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna go ahead and see what happens. It looks just about right, so that's what I'm going with. Put a little bit of oil in the drill bit and hope for the best. Damn. Ah! The drill isn't properly tightening down on the drill bit and it's not wanting to go. Damn it! I went home and got another drill. Hopefully this one can actually tighten down on that drill bit a little more or else I'm gonna have to cut the drill bit so it can get held in by the chuck more. The time cert that I have is a little bit too long. It's about two millimeters too long. If I do the counter bore, it's gonna be sticking down under past the manifold 
which I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it did say that if your piece is a little bit too long, don't do the counter bore and just have it go in and it's have it stop on its own. And then I'm gonna have to come in and sand the top of the time cert so that it, the manifold can be all flat. Cause it's not gonna be flat once I put this in there, but I'm gonna have to shave it down, which this is scary, but <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta do it. I ran this file over the top of the time cert just to see if it'll eat the material quick enough and it actually was eating it so I'm just gonna stick it in without putting the counter bore on and use the file until it's all the way flat with the manifold. Okay, here goes nothing. Pray that this goes well for me. <laughs> oh shit. I'm gonna get some oil on there. Whoa, this drill is fucking crazy. This thing just chewed through the whole, like three quarters of the manifold in five seconds, bro. <laughs> what? What the hell? What? Hopefully that was straight enough. Oh my God, I'm glad that's over though. That looks pretty straight to me. I feel really good about this now. I'm gonna skip over this step right here, straight to the tap. They recommend using a tapping wrench, but there's no way I'm gonna be able to fit that in here, so I'm gonna try and get it started as straight as I can, and then use an adjustable wrench to tighten it on. Every step of the way is kinda nerve wracking, but that's how it is. Got my oil on there. I'm gonna try and start it by hand, and hope that I can start this straight. There's no way that it's already tight. <laughs> There's no way do I have to start it all the way from, I guess so. so. I can't tell what straight is because the flange sits at such a weird angle. Fuck. Fuck, bro, this is so hard to keep it straight. I just gotta start, get more threads down so that it'll kind of straighten itself out, but I still have to be very close for it to straighten itself out. Every turn, I'm just stepping back, trying to see if it's straight or not. I just took a little break mid tap and I came back and it does not look anywhere near as straight as it was before. I don't know, this one's matching this angle, but it's not matching the top one. This one is matching these three and that one's a little off. I am so confused. Why does it look like that? This is what's so L like. So the top of the tap is matching kinda with that one, but like, is that the one to match to? <sighs> Whatever, I'm just gonna keep going. I can't restart now since I already started the tap, so. On it goes. I guess the only deciding factor is when I put the stud on, is the turbo gonna slide on? It feels good now, at least. At least it has threads, right? Yeah, that feels so much better now. Now that the threads are in, I can insert the time cert, and you can see in the back, that paper is picking up all the metal shavings, which is good. These time certs are smaller at the bottom, so if I put this, insert tool in, it's gonna bottom out in a few threads because it's gonna expand what it's already in. Before anything, you need to put oil onto this driver tool and then put that into there and then put red Loctite on the outside of this and I'm gonna take this assembly, thread it into the turbo manifold and then let the Loctite sit and then once the Loctite sets up, I think I'm gonna give it like an hour so that it dries out and gets pretty strong, that's when you wanna run the driver tool through to expand the time cert inside of the turbo manifold. And hopefully that's gonna be the best solution. Put some oil up on that. 
Thread it onto here. There we go, it only went a few threads in. And then with a red Loctite, I'm gonna get this real nice. I really don't want the heat of the turbo manifold to make this come loose. So I'm gonna try and get a good amount on there. Oh shit, that's a pretty good amount. <laughs> but, damn that was a lot of Loctite. Look at it like coming out. There we go, I'm gonna leave that there. After an hour, I'm gonna come in and just fully drive this tool on. It's tight right now, so it's gonna take a lot of resistance to open that time cert up. Hopefully this works. All right, it's been over an hour. Now I'm just gonna run this driver tool all the way in. Now I'm pretty sure it's expanding because it's getting a little tighter. This is very concerning. That looks so off, but like, I don't know. That driver tool looks so off. Fuck. Now's the moment of truth. I'm gonna put a stud on and see if the turbo still slips on. Let's go. The threads are definitely a lot stronger now. That is for sure. It's just, is it gonna fit? Please. No way is it actually. It actually is way off. It actually is way off compared to the top one. It's like ugh, towards the front of the car a little bit. It's getting exaggerated because of how long this stud is though. I'm gonna install one of my old studs. It's a little shorter and hopefully I have more room for air, more wiggle room. It just bottomed out right there, so I guess that's where it's gonna go. No way, it actually is off. I'm so annoyed. It actually is off. <laughs> this shit is off. <laughs> Fucking idiot. How do I fuck up this bad, yo? Those three studs are in. And then the bottom left one is very clearly. T there we go, that's more visible. It's a little off. I can't even fucking show it on camera. There we go. I don't know. That stud is just off. Hopefully this bolt still threads in. If this doesn't thread in, then I, I really have no idea. Oh my god, it's kind of off. I can see it from here, bro. Look at how- why, how the fuck? How is it off by so much? It's so off-centered. I can't get that bolt in there. I took the other stud out. Hopefully there's more wiggle room. I'm gonna be fucked, yo, if this doesn't work. <laughs> oh yeah, so now it's, it's sitting on that little insert. Fuck, yo, it's really off by a lot, actually. This is exactly why I was nervous. Cause there's a big percentage of me fucking it up. What am I gonna do? I was kind of sloppy on the file and I took down a little corner of the manifold. Hopefully it'll be fine because it just needs to seal on the inside. The time sir is now flush with the turbo manifold. It's cleaned out and now I'm just praying. Please bolt in. <laughs> this is definitely worse than before I started doing this. This is why I was nervous. Cause I knew this was a high possibility. <laughs> and it actually ended up coming true. I have the bottom left one in all the way. And the top left one looks like it'll maybe go in. But these two are way off. That amount of gap on the bottom right is not gonna fly. So yeah, that insert that I put in there is definitely crooked. And I think the problem happened because I put the tap in at a little bit of an angle. It was so hard to have it square on the flange just cause it's such a weird angle on the flange, but. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do now. To be honest, I'm about to end this video here just cause this is such an L. <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't even know.
Before the video ends, I just want to apologize for the grand lack of uploading. <laughs> Some more family issues popped up and we're good now, but it's been a very tough few months, so I'm just going to end it here. If you guys, <laughs> I don't even know. I feel like there was nothing to enjoy from this video because nothing happened except for, I don't, I don't even know. I'm so, thank you for watching.